Camp Facer. <laughs> What's going on, campers? Camp Facer here. Happy New Year, everybody. And welcome back to another Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Game video. We have some questions and answers coming from fans over on the official Texas Chainsaw Massacre subreddit. If you're new here and you haven't heard about this game coming out, Gun Interactive, the developers of the game, announced their trailer over at the Game Awards for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Game. Let's dive into these questions, you guys. Over on the subreddit, username Efficient Act asks, third person, will this game get played third person or first? Now Matt Shacha, the community developer over there, says third person. There you have it. <laughs> Straightforward answer. Um, now, I know why, because Gun Interactive in the past, when they were working on Friday the 13th of the game, uh, people in the community were asking the same questions if it was going to be first person or third. Now, um, now Wes Keltner over at Gun Interactive uh, chimed in way, a ways back and said, I would rather people see the character that they're playing, um, the outfit that they're wearing. Um, now, I agree, you guys. I would like to see this in third person myself. I'm glad that they chose third person. Because why wouldn't you want to see the character that you're playing as um, follow behind, like the behind camera? First person works really good in like different kinds of like story mode games. Like if you're searching for like through a haunted house or something like that. It brings the, the immersion deeper to your character because you, like, you're seeing just that perspective. But in a multiplayer uh, uh, asymmetrical horror IP game like this... I would rather see Leatherface in front of me running that I'm playing. I get to see what he looks like and, and so on. So I think this is going to be a really good choice. So anyways, moving on to the next question. This one comes from a user named Sceptral. He asked, environmental physics. This is a really good question here, okay? Uh, one thing I didn't enjoy about F-13 is how objects and interiors and such didn't feel dynamic, but more so they are just to be there. For example, in Higgins Haven Lodge, in the main living room, it feels so narrow with the couches and tables that just feel more like bl path blockers that you just have to work your way around and especially doesn't help in an encounter with Jason. Now, um, I, I understand where he's coming from. He wants to be able to interact with objects and um, knock things over and instead of just hitting into a table or a chair and the chair doesn't move. It would be more realistic to knock things over and stuff like that. But let's hear what Matt Shacha has to say. He says, While interactive elements in level design are extremely immersive, there has to be a line there somewhere otherwise players could crumble the buildings, etc. It also helps to be able to design for combat in a room or evasion. Without static elements, it can become extremely difficult to balance out the level for both sides since one side has a man wielding a chainsaw and the other doesn't. So with that in mind, I can say we have elements of the maps that are interactable and dynamic and elements that are not. These elements range from minor destruction to environmental changes, like say lighting. More on all this later. Okay, so he is saying that there's going to be some interactive environments in the game. Um, he did confirm lighting. I don't know what he means by that. Maybe you can go and shut a light off and turn a light on. Or maybe you can go up and smash a light bulb and the lights go out. Um, but there's got to be a line drawn here, you guys, with interactive uh, elements in the game. Uh, but at the same time, when you're playing Friday the 13th and you're chasing a counselor around that big long table in the cabin... I would have liked it more if Jason could have at least chopped it right down the middle once and then be able to walk through the middle of the table. Because, in you know, in the movies, why couldn't... Like, Jason would definitely destroy that table. And it didn't feel... It didn't feel right you couldn't push certain things over in F-13. So I hope in this game there's more interactive uh, uh, objects inside uh, the house or outside that you can knock over or move. But we'll have to wait and see. So there's an answer on that. Anyways, moving along to the next question. This is a good question coming from Fairgrade. Picking up weapons. Will the killers that spawn in the match be able to pick up different weapons instead of just having a primary weapon? Matt Shacha chimed in and says, No, 
The killers all have their primary weapons direct from canon, either in the original film or as written. That being said, there is way more to each killer than their unique design that we will be revealing in the future, because after all, the killer is more than just their weapon of choice. You know, there we have it. You know, they, they get their one weapon. I, you know, Leatherface is going to get the chainsaw. And I'm not sure what the other players, the other killers are going to get. But, you know, a little disappointed because um, I would sometimes I would like to put that chainsaw down and grab like a barn axe or a pickaxe or something like that um, to swap it up. Uh, well, who knows? Maybe down the, down the road they'll do like a weapon swap type deal like they did in the Friday the 13th. Uh, but anyways, last but not least, we're moving on to the next question. This one does not have an answer as of yet, but I thought this was a very interesting one. Uh, this comes from Doomsday Fan over on the subreddit as well. He says, should the matches have a time limit or no time limit? Now, he says, usually with these kinds of games, you get something like 15 or 20 minute time limit. If there's still players running around from both teams, the game will just end. For me personally, I feel like there shouldn't be a time limit. We should be left to play until one team or the other wins. Now, you guys, honestly, um, there's got to be a fine line drawn here. I mean, it's for balance. And, you know, if they're going to have a uh, spectating mode, like in Friday the 13th, if there's no time limit, there's going to be people running around, maybe teaming with each other, just, draw, dr you know, dragging out that time. It could go over an hour. And if you're if you're if you're spectating, you're not going to stick around. You're going to leave. Um, that wouldn't be fair to other players, and it would just ruin the 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 immersion to the the game. And I don't think it would really work. But we put up a poll here, and I thought it was interesting because um, so far we have um, I want a time limit for every match, no matter what. Uh, Forty nine people voted for that. Twenty nine people voted for. Players should be able to select whether they want a time limit um, or not. But honestly, I don't think it would work to have uh, to change the gameplay style. If you, if you click, uh, I want a time limit, then the gameplay is going to work different. If you have no time limit, then it could, I don't think Gun is going to make two versions of the game. Because uh, there's got to be, I, I bet there's going to be a time uh, limit in play with the, um, the way the match plays out. And then finally... Uh, 17 people voted. I don't want a time limit at all. Uh, I voted for the first one. I think it should have a time limit. Uh, I'm not sure how much time would be needed for the, the actual gameplay. We don't know anything about the gameplay yet, but a time limit, I, I feel, would, would work out really well. Um, anyways, that's it for now. I just thought I'd grab a few questions over on the subreddit. And, and bring you some interesting answers and facts from the community developer Matt Shacha from Gun Interactive. So there you have it. There's some questions and there's the facts. But there is also one more question before we leave. Uh, a lot of people were asking about cross-platform and Matt Shacha chimed in and said that they're very interested in doing it, but they're not sure yet. Now to me, you guys, cross-platform being PC, Xbox, and PlayStation all get to play at the same time on the same match would make for a bigger um, experience with more players involved in the game. It would be awesome. But could you only imagine PC hackers uh, coming into a PlayStation lobby and, and exploiting the game with hacks? I don't know if that would work out so well, so I'm not too sure if I would like that. Um, let's just keep... Look what happened with the... the Lately, over on Friday the 13th of the game, if you join it on a PC uh, um, match, you have like five Jasons running around and like 40 counselors and there's so many glitches and people are hacking the game. I don't know if they could fix that. If they could fix that over on this new um, TCM game, um, then then I would, be, I would be all game for that. But um, until then, I would rather the console players stick to the console players, the PC players stick to the PC players. Um, but yeah, um, anyways, that's it for today's video. I want to say thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions or answers or you have any discussion you want to talk about, leave a comment down below. Give this video a like. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. If you have not yet subscribed, please consider. And I will see you guys in the next video. And as always, campers, stay out of the woods.